Happening today, presidential candidate Robert F. Kennedy Jr. is set to honor former labor leader Cesar Chavez in Los Angeles. It's part of the candidate's new Viva Kennedy effort to reach out to Latino voters. But Chavez's family is demanding that RFK Jr. stop referencing the late labor and civil rights leader on the campaign trail. Let's bring back Democratic strategist and former Obama campaign advisor Misha Cross and Republican strategist Malik Abdul. Guys, welcome back. This question's for both of you. I will start with you, Amisha. How crucial is Latino vote for RFK Jr.? I think the Latino vote is crucial for everybody um, yeah. in this election cycle and those to come. Um, it is one of the, the largest growing population in this country. And if census data proves to be correct, which it typically does, um, within the next decade or so, it will be the largest group in this country. And I think that we have to pay a lot of attention to that. So all campaigns are making a concerted effort to reach out to Latinos. Ironically, the RNC um, dropped its diversity outreach programs, which I find a little bit interesting in this election cycle. But for the most part, Latinos are a vote that's up for grabs. So, Malik, we were talking about the Chavez family. They're voting for Biden. They've mm -hmm. endorsed Biden. They're demanding RFK to stop using Cesar Chavez's name, his image. Despite that, could RFK chip away when it comes to those Latino voters? No. <laughs> really? <laughs> no, I don't think that RFK will have an impact on the Latino vote. We're seeing now that Latino voters actually have been moving towards the Republican Party, I believe, since 2021. We've seen that they've been moving. How competitive RFK will be, I don't think he just will be competitive at all. Mm -hmm. um, I think that overwhelmingly the Latinos will actually vote Democrat. I don't think it's possible to do such a shift within just one election cycle. So I do think that um, between Trump and Biden, there will be competition for that vote. But for RFK, I think that he's literally probably going to fizzle as we get into both the, um, the the RNC and the DNC conventions. I don't think there is much there with, R with RFK. Okay. And Malik, let's take a look at how Trump and Biden are doing with those Latino voters. We're going to take a look at a poll. It shows Trump gaining ground among Latino voters at 46 percent. That's a high number, especially yeah. when it comes to Republican voters. We mm -hmm. do agree with that. And oh, do you think absolutely. this is a message from voters about the economy to Biden? Well, it's a number of things. It's the it's the economy, it's immigration, it's, you know, dissatisfaction. Biden actually has the curse and the benefit of being president of the United States. So many people will blame him for anything that's going on. I think that he needs to make some inroads with the Hispanic community. But at the end of the day, outside of, you know, the things that he's doing at the very macro level, it's only so much Joe Biden will be able to do. But it will be a fight between Joe Biden and Donald Trump. I just don't think that RFK will factor into it, though. I, so, I agree with that. Okay, and I think I we have to go back that, to the yeah. Cesar Chavez conversation because yes. um, because of his historic importance, because of his uh, vital importance to the Latino community, and I think the union community, the workers' rights community writ large, President Biden is the union president. He's the guy who stood there and crossed. The, he was the guy who was in the picket line in the UAW strike, uh, first sitting president to ever do so. He is union strong. That He rides that on, it is on his back. He has been waving that banner for a very long time. And his past legislation, had, while he was in the Senate, also as president, he signed legislation to strengthen union, union workers and unions' rights. Meanwhile, in former President Trump, you have someone who wants to dismantle unions, someone who shouts down at unions. Um, and here with RFK, it's very interesting to me for RFK Jr. to kind of try to rally the Cesar Chavez name, not acknowledging that Cesar Chavez's granddaughter is the campaign manager for <laughs> President Biden. Yes. Right. I don't want to rush the answer, but I have to ask you, both of you, quickly, what do you think of RFK's uh, pick for VP? Nonsensical. Um, I think that for him, he chose somebody who has zero name recognition. She's a woman, obviously. I think that at the end of the day, everyone who is going to be running in, in 2024 is going to have a woman vice president. Donald Trump hasn't announced his yet, yeah. but it will more than likely be a woman as well. Quickly, Malik. Yeah, well, remember John McCain chose Sarah Palin. We do. Um, RFK choosing um, the VP, I don't think that it will have any impact. Obviously, she has a lot of money, and yeah. I think that's what he's looking at. But president, vice president material? No. Malik, Amisha, don't go too far, guys. Thank you so much. Thanks for watching. Go to joinnn.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.